The following manuscript was taken from the book titled, Poems Lyric and Pastora, Volume 2 by Edward Williams. Published 1794. On page 218. Mr. Williams says, The triades that are here selected are from a manuscript collection, by Llewellyn Sion, a bard of Glamorgan, about the year 1560. Of this manuscript I have a transcript, the original is in the possession of Mr. Richard Bradford, of Betus near Bridgend in Glamorgan. Institutional Triads. 1. The three first institutional bards of Britain were Plenied, Alorn, and Gron. 2. For three reasons are the bards titled bards according to the rites and institutes of the bards of the island of Britain, first, because bardism originated in Britain, secondly, because pure bardism was never well understood in any other country, thirdly, because pure bardism can never be preserved and continued but by means of the institutes and voice conventional of the bards of the island of Britain, for this reason, of whatever country they may be. They are titled bards according to the rites and institutes of the bards of the island of Britain. 3. The three memorials of the bards of the island of Britain, Memorial of Song, Memorial of Bardic Voice Conventional, and the Memorial of Ostensible Usage. 4. Of three descriptions are the bards of the island of Britain, primitive bards, instituted before Christianity, and since that, the bards of belly, and the bards dissentient. 5. There are three orders of the primitive bards. The ruling bard, or primitive bard positive, according to the rites, voice, and usage of the bardic conventions, whole office it is to superintend and regulate, the ovate, or uvate, according to genius, exertion, and incident, whose avocation it is to act on the principles of inventive genius, and the druid, according to the reason, nature, and necessities of things, and his office is to instruct. 6. The three primary privileges of the bards of the island of Britain, are, maintenance wherever they go, that no naked weapon be borne in their presence, and their testimony preferred to that of all others. 7. The three ultimate intentions of bardism to reform morals and customs, to secure peace, and to celebrate the praises of all that is good and excellent. 8. Three things are forbidden to a bard, immorality, to satirize, and to bear arms. 9. The three modes of instruction used by the bards of the island of Britain, the dictates of the voice conventional, song, and of usage conventional. 10. The three joys of the bards of the island of Britain, the increase of knowledge, the reformation of manners, and the triumphs of peace over the lawless and depredatory. 11. The three splendid triumphs of the bards of the island of Britain, the triumph of learning over ignorance, the triumph of reason over irrationality, and the triumph of peace over the lawless and depredatory. 12. The three congenialities, or attributes, of the bards of the island of Britain, to make truth manifest and diffuse the knowledge of it, to perpetuate the praise of all that is good and excellent, and with peace to prevail over the lawless and depredatory. 13. The three necessary, but reluctant, duties of the bards of the island of Britain, secrecy for the sake of peace and public good, invective lamentation required by justice, and to unsheathe the sword against the lawless and depredatory. 14. Three things cannot be controverted, the usages, the song, and the voice, of the bardic convention. 15. Three things must be preserved by the bards, the Kimbric language, the primitive bardism, and the remembrance of ale that is good and excellent. 16. Without three qualifications no one can be a bard, a poetical genius, the knowledge of the bardic institutes, and irreproachable morals. 17. There are three avoidant injunctions on the bard, to avoid sloth as being the man of diligence and exertion, to avoid contention as being the man of peace, and to avoid folly as being the man of reason. 18. Three nations corrupted what was taught them of the British bardism, blending with it heterogeneal principles, by which means they loft it, the Scots, Irish, the Latavian Cimbri, the Breton of France, and the German. These contain most of the leading maxims of the British Bardic Institution, how they may illustrate, correct, and be corrected by, what the Greek and Roman writers have related of the bards and druids let the learned inquire. Of all the modern Bardic historians, not one has given us a single word of truth, or anything like good sense, 
but Mr. W. Owen, prefixed to his lately published translation from the Welsh of the poetical works of Liwa Ken, Triades of Bardism, or Theological Triages. 1. There are three primeval unities, and more than one of each cannot exist, one God, one truth, and one point of liberty, and this is where all opposites equiponderate. 2. Three things proceed from the three primeval unities, all of life, all that is good, and all power. 3. God consists necessarily of three things, the greatest of life, the greatest of knowledge, and the greatest of power, and of what is the greatest there can be no more than one of anything. 4. Three things it is impossible God should not be, whatever perfect goodness should be, whatever perfect goodness would desire to be, and whatever perfect goodness can perform. 5. Three things evince what God has done and will do, infinite power, infinite wisdom, and infinite love, for, there is nothing that these attributes want of power, of knowledge, or of will, to perform. 6. The three regulations of God towards giving existence to everything, to annihilate the power of evil, to assist all that is good, and to make discrimination manifest, that it might be known what should and what should not be. 7. Three things it is impossible that God should not perform, what is most beneficial, what all want most, and what is most beautiful of all things. 8. The three stabilities of existence, what cannot be otherwise, what need not be otherwise, and what cannot be conceived better, and in these will all things end. 9. Three things will infallibly be done, all that is possible for the power, for the wisdom, and for the love, of God to perform. 10. The three grand attributes of God, infinite plenitude of life, of knowledge, and of power. 11. Three causes produced animated beings, divine love, possessed of perfect knowledge, divine wisdom, knowing all possible means, and divine power, possessed by the joint will of divine love and wisdom. 12. There are three circles, or states of existence, the circle of infinity, where there is nothing but God, of living or dead, and none but God can traverse it, the circle of intuition, where all things are by nature derived from death, this circle has been traversed by man, and the circle of felicity, comma, where all things spring from life, this man shall traverse in heaven. 13. Animated beings have three states of existence, that of intuition in the great deep, or lowest point existence, that of liberty in the state of humanity and that of love, which is felicity, in heaven. 14. All animated beings are subject to three necessities, a beginning in the great deep, lowest point of existence, progression in the circle of intuition, and plenitude in heaven, or the circle of felicity, without these things nothing can possibly exist but God. 15. Three things are necessary in the circle of intuition, the least of all animation, and thence the beginning, the materials of all things, and thence increase, which cannot take place in any other, late, the formation of all things out of the dead mass, hence discriminate individuality. 16. Three things cannot but exist towards all animated beings from the nature of divine justice, co-sufferance in the circle of intuition, because without that none could attain to the perfect knowledge of anything, co-participation in the divine love, and cultimity from the nature of God's power, and its attributes of justice and mercy. 17. There are three necessary occasions of intuition, metempsychosis, to collect the materials and properties of every nature, to collect the knowledge of everything, and to collect power towards subduing the adverse and devastative, and for the divestation of evil, without this traversing every mode of animated existence, no state of animation, or of anything in nature, can attain to plenitude. 18. The three greats, or primary, infelicities of the circle of intuition, necessity, loss of memory, and death. 19. There are three principal indispensabilities, necessities, before plenitude of knowledge can be obtained, to traverse the circle of intuition, to traverse the circle of felicity, and the recovered memory of all things down to the great deep. 20. Three things are indispensably connected with the state of intuition, no subjection to injunctive laws, because it is impossible for any actions to be there otherwise than they are, the escape of death from all evil and devastation, and the accumulation of life and good, by becoming diverted of evil in the escapes of death, 
and all through divine love embracing all things. 21. The three instrumentalities of God in the circle of intuition, towards subduing evil and devastation, necessity, loss of memory, and death. 22. There are three canates, man, liberty, and light, intellectual light is here probably meant. 23. The three necessary incidents of humanity, to suffer, to change, and to choose, and, man having the power of choosing, it is impossible before occurrence to foresee what his sufferings and changes will be. 24. The three equiportions of humanity, intuition and felicity, necessity and liberty, evil and good, all equiponderate, man having the power of attaching himself to either the one or the other. 25. From three causes will the necessity of rancoation fall on man, from not endeavoring to obtain knowledge, from non-attachment to good, and from attachment to evil, occasioned by these things he will fall down to his connatural state in the circle of intuition, whence, as at first, he returns to humanity. 26. For three reasons must man unavoidably fall into the circle of intuition, though he has in everything else attached himself to good, pride, for which he falls down to the utmost of the great deep, or lowest point of existence, falsehood, untruth, to a state corresponding with his turpitude, and cruelty into a corresponding state of brutal malignity, whence, as at first, he returns to the state of humanity. 27. Three things are primatial in the state of humanity, the accumulations of knowledge, benevolence, and power, without undergoing dissolution, death, this cannot be done, as of liberty and choice, in any state previous to humanity, these are called the three victories. 28. The three victories over evil and devastation are knowledge, love, benevolence, and power, for these know how, have the will, and the power, in their conjunctive capacities, to effect all they can desire, these begin, and are forever continued, in the state of humanity. 29. The three privileges of the state of humanity, equiponderance of evil and good, whence competitivity, liberty of choice, whence judgment and preference, and the origin of power, proceeding from judgment and preference, these being indispensably prior to all other exertions. 30. In three things man unavoidably differs from God, man is a finite, God is infinite, man had a beginning, which God could not have, man not being able to endure eternity, must have in the circle of felicity a rotatory change of his mode of existence, God is under no such necessity, being able to endure all things, and that confident with felicity. 31. Three things are primatial in the circle of felicity, cessation of evil, cessation of want, and the cessation of perishing. 32. The three restorations of the circle of felicity. Restoration of original genius and character, restoration of all that was primevally beloved, and the restoration of remembrance from the origin of all things, without these, perfect felicity cannot subsist. 33. Three things discriminate every animated being from all others, original genius, peculiarity of remembrance, and peculiarity of perception, each of these in its plenitude, and two plenitudes of anything, cannot exist. 34. With three things has God endued every animated being, with all the plenitude of his own nature, with individuality differing from that of all others, and with an original and peculiar character and genius, which is that of no other being, hence in every being a plenitude of that self, differing from all others. 35. By the knowledge of three things will all evil and death be diminished and subdued, their nature, their cause, and their operations, this knowledge will be obtained in the circle of felicity. 36. The three stabilities of knowledge are, to have traversed every hate of animated existence, to remember every flats and its incidents, and to be able to traverse all states of animation that can be desired, for the sake of experience and judgment, this will be obtained in the circle of felicity. 37. The three peculiar distinctions of every being in the circle of felicity are, location, privilege, and character, disposition, nor is it possible for any two beings to be uniformly the same in everything, for, everyone will possess plenitude of what constitutes his incommunicable distinction from all others, and there can be no plenitude of anything without having it in a degree that comprehends the whole of it that can exist. 38. Three things none but God can do, 
to endure the eternities of the circle of infinity, to participate of every hate of exigence without changing, and to reform and renovate ever, thing without causing the loss of it. 39. Three things can never be annihilated, from their unavoidable possibilities, mode of existence, essentials of existence, and the utility of every mode of existence, these will, divested of their evils, exist forever, as varieties of the good and beautiful in the circle of felicity. 40. The three excellences of changing mode of existence in the circle of felicity, acquisition of knowledge, beautiful variety, and repose, from not being able to endure uniform infinity and uninterrupted eternity. 41. Three things increase continually, fire, or light, understanding, or truth, soul, or life, these will prevail over everything else, and then the state of inchoation will cease. 42. Three things dwindle away continually, the dark, the false, and the dead. 43. Three things accumulate strength continually, there being a majority of desires towards them, love, knowledge, and justice. 44. Three things become more and more enfeebled daily, there being a majority of desires in opposition to them, hatred, injustice, and ignorance. 45. The three plenitudes of felicity, participation of every nature with a plenitude of one predominant, conformity to every call of genius and character, possessing superior excellence in one, the love of all beings and exigences, but chiefly consented in one object, which is God, and in the predominant one of each of these will the plenitude of felicity consist. 46. The three necessary essentials of God, infinite in himself, finite to finite comprehensions, and co-unity with every mode of existence in the circle of felicity. These triades have often an air of tautology, occasioned by this very circumscribed mode of dictating in short aphorisms that afford not room for sufficient explication, whence the necessity of reassuming a subject in a second, third, or fourth, triad, and, perhaps, oftener on some occasions. I find but very little assistance from the technology of modern, derived from the Grecian, metaphysics, in my attempts to render the language of Bardism into English, and have made no great use of it. The Bardic theology, and the morality deduced from it, are truly patriarchal, pure, and sublime. I shall here insert a few of the ethical triades, or, as they are titled, triads of wisdom. Ethical triades. 1. The three primary principles of wisdom, obedience to the laws of God, concern for the welfare of mankind, and suffering with fortitude all the accidents of life. 2. The three great laws of man's actions, what he forbids in another, what he requires from another, and what he cares not how it is done by another. 3. Three things well understood will give peace, the tendencies of nature, the claims of justice, and the voice of truth. 4. There are three ways of searching the heart of man, in the thing he is not aware of, in the manner he is not aware of, and at the time he is not aware of. 5. There are three things, and God will not love him that loves to look at them, fighting, a monster, and the pomposity of pride. 6. Three things produce wisdom, truth, consideration, and suffering. 7. The three great ends of knowledge, duty, utility, and decorum. 8. There are three men that all ought to look upon with affection, he that, with affection, looks at the face of the earth, that is delighted with rational works of art, and that looks lovingly on little infants. 9. Three men will not love their country, he that loves luxurious food, he that loves riches, and he that loves ease. 10. Three things may be observed in a woman, and, loving the first, she will not dislike the other two, her own face in the mirror, her husband's back afar off, and a gallant in her bed. 11. The three laughs of a fool, at the good, at the bad, and at he knows not what. 12. Three things corrupt the world, pride, superfluity, and indolence. We have a set of triades, entitled Triad Paul, Paul's Triades. They are a selection of the Christian doctrines put into this aphoristical form, and thus adapted to bardic recitation and tradition. Paul's Triades 1. There are three forts of men, the man of God, who renders good for evil, the man of man who renders good for good, 
and evil for evil, am the man of the devil, who renders evil for good. 2. Three-fourths of people are the delight of God, he meek, the lovers of peace, and the lovers of mercy. 3. There are three marks of the children of God, humble demeanor, a pure conscience, and the suffering of injuries patiently. 4. The three principal things required by God, love, justice, and humility. 5. In three places will be found the most of God, where he is mostly sought, where mostly loved, and where there is the least of self. 6. There are three forts of lies, verbal lies, the lies of silence and the lies of false appearances, each inducing us to believe what we should not. 7. Three things shall a man obtain by a belief in God, what is necessary in this life, a peaceable, conscience, and communion with heaven. 8. The three advices given by Lazarus are, believe in God, who made thee. Love God, who redeemed thee. And fear God, who will judge thee. 9. Three ways a Christian punishes an enemy, by forgiving him, by not divulging his wickedness, and by doing him all the good that is possible. 10. The three great concerns of a Christian, left he should offend God, left he should be a stumbling block to man, and left his love towards all that is good should fail. 11. The three evidences of holiness, self-denial, a liberal disposition, and the encouragement of all that is good. 12. The three dainties of Christian festivity, what God has prepared, what can be obtained consistent with justice to all, and what love to all can venture to use. 13. Three persons have the claims and privileges of brothers and sisters, the orphan, the widow, and the alien. These were the doctrines inculcated by the Welsh bards in those dark ages when Rome preached up what was very different. Poetic triades, or triades of song. 1. The three primary requisites of poetical genius, an eye that can see nature, a heart that can feel nature, and a resolution that dares fellow nature. 2. The three final intentions of poetry, accumulation of goodness, enlargement of the understanding, and what increases delight. 3. The three properties of just imagination, what is possible, what ought to be, and what is decorous. 4. The three indispensabilities of the language of poetry, purity, copiousness, and propriety. 5. Three things should be well understood in poetry, the great, the little and their connectives. 6. Three things must be avoided in poetry, the frivolous, the obscure, and the superfluous. 7. The three principal considerations of poetical description, what is obvious, what instantly engages the affections, and what is strikingly characteristic. 8. The three dignities of poetry, the true and the wonderful united, beauty and sapience united, and the union of art and nature. 9. The three utilities of poetry, the praise of virtue and goodness, the memory of things remarkable, and to invigorate the affections. 10. The three indispensable purities of poetry, pure truth, pure language, and purity of manners. 11. Three things thoroughly should all poetry be, thoroughly erudite, thoroughly animated, and thoroughly natural. Finis.